Mm. Hey guys. <laughs> Sorry, just one more real quick. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. 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 Okay, now where are we? Oh, yes. Attention, citizens. If you've been edging for the last four weeks, waiting for that perfect moment to peak, now's the time. Defon Don is feeling stickier than a toddler's car seat after being found guilty on all 34 felony counts. New York District Attorney Alvin Bragg could not be reached for comment as he is currently in his office being serviced by a line of exuberant liberals. The jurors also could not be reached for comment as they have all faked their deaths and moved to other countries. Donald Trump could not be reached for comment because he is meeting with his engineering team at Truth Social about finding an alternative to an all caps post that looks bigger and angrier. Ivanka Trump could not be reached for comment because she's in hiding. And Melania could not be reached for comment because she is reviewing her prenup again, which is how she unwinds after a stressful week. Samuel Lolito's wife could not be reached for comment because she is furiously flipping through her flag collection, trying to decide which one to put up. The North American Witch Hunting Society could also not be reached for comment because they are drunk. And liberals could not be reached for comment because they are tore up from the floor up. Champagne sales are expected to continue their steep climb past 500,000% that started on Thursday afternoon. And we can look forward to a surprise guest star on next week's episode of Celebrity Prison Bitch. Okay, now let's come back down to earth for just a minute because the big question is, what's next? What's the punishment for these 34 convictions? <laughs> Let me show you guys. <laughs> Did we mention that they found him guilty on all 34 counts after less than 24 hours of deliberation and that he's a convicted felon now? <laughs> Sorry, I need a cigarette. Anyways, right, the sentencing. Uh, our chief legal correspondent, Austin Dodson, is here to discuss Trump's sentencing. Austin, what you got? Trump convicted and sent to Gitmo. After only 32 minutes of deliberation, the jury came back with a guilty AF verdict, and Judge Mershon took the extraordinary step of sentencing the orange man to an orange jumpsuit right after the verdict was read. Quote, four years in Gitmo, all the dollars and fines. Your lawyers will be held in contempt. We won't validate your parking, and maybe don't tweet about the judge's daughter next time. Trump, a very big guy, really big, broke down in tears saying, sir, please take Don Jr. and Eric instead. Okay, Austin, I don't know that all of that is completely true, but it did release a lot of endorphins in my body just thinking about it, so uh, thanks. But seriously, Trump has insisted he is not a flight risk in a shockingly ironic statement made to a press gaggle gathered in front of his 747. Although it is a Boeing 747, so he might be kind of correct. During the trial, Trump shot his mouth off again about E. Jean Carroll, which usually seems to end well for him. And Carroll's lawyer has requested permission from the court to streamline the legal proceedings by simply sending Trump a Venmo request for $100 million each time he reoffends. Okay, other stuff did happen this week that was important, but none of it was this fun. So let's calm down, by which I mean, you know, keep drinking. We suggest a screwdriver because it's orange and he's screwed. Israel accidentally bombed a bunch of innocent civilians at a tent camp, which follows several other accidental bombings by Israel of Palestinian civilians. They've decided to start referring to these incidents as oopsie doodles. And Benjamin Netanyahu is very sorry, and he has vowed that Going forward, from this moment on, there will only be 27 oopsie doodles a week. Thanks, BB. The British Museum has been coordinating with the FBI to track the sale of stolen artifacts that are showing up in the States. The various bits and bobs that were gently acquired by the British from around the world were ganked from the museum in a robbery last year and have been turning up for sale on sites like eBay. The items, when they are eventually returned to the British Museum, will be featured in a new display curated around the theme of incredible irony. Cultural ambassadors from Egypt, India, Pakistan, and South America have all sent their driest side eyes and expressed their hope that when their country's treasures are once again in British hands, that they immediately choke on them. More trouble for Boeing this week as the front doors of their headquarters building fell off while being unlocked. Further disaster struck when the balloon vendor in the lobby detected a persistent helium leak. 
The Senate Military Budget Committee has allocated $75 million to replace the four doors and seven balloons, and the board of directors responded to the situation by issuing each other bonuses totaling $85 million. Speaking of companies that are full of good ideas, Canva had an announcement this week which they celebrated with some absolutely douche-tastic rapping. You can redesign your work, Canva got that glow up. We redesign everything from the flow up. Customize your workspace and make it your own. Ooh, now you making magic when you up in the zone. <laughs> wow, that was hard to listen to. Here now with a diss track in response is our own Mike Dynamo. What did Canva do? I feel like they killed hip hop, it's true. It looks so bad and just can't last if hip hop changes its name to Chaz. It's not, the canvas, not fun. I've used it many a time. But remember where Menda didn't write these rhymes. Canvas giving out cringy Hamilton vibes. A man is planning an underwater submersible trip to prove it's safe after the Ocean Gate disaster. I think this is great. Like, should we make this a sort of new tradition type thing? Like, could we get Trump to fly exclusively on Boeing planes? Zuckerberg yachting in orca heavy waters? Elon Musk to stick his neck under a closing Cybertruck hood? Come on, billionaires, let's get some new hobbies. Folks, we have a new contender for dumbest criminal ever, and no, he's not running for president. Yet. A man joined his court hearing via Zoom while driving, which was a problem because the court hearing was about him driving without a license. Mr. Hello? Harris, are you driving? Um, actually, I'm pulling into my doctor's office, actually. So maybe I don't understand something. This is a driving while license suspended? That is correct, Your Honor. Um, and he was just driving. And he didn't have a license. He's suspended and he's just driving. That is correct, Your Honor. I don't even know why he would do that. So defendant's bond is revoked in this matter. Defendant is turning himself into the Washington County Jail by 6 p.m. today. Failure to turn himself in will result in a bench warrant with no bond. Oh man, how could he have known that something like this could happen? Why didn't anybody tell him? Seriously though, I'm rooting for this guy and I think he'll make a great vice presidential candidate. A rare blue-eyed cicada was spotted in Chicago. Great, now they're gentrifying bugs. And finally tonight, the creator of Precious Moments figurines, Sam Butcher, passed away at the age of 85. Famous the world over for his iconic teary-eyed children collectibles, Mr. Butcher is survived by a number of family members, each hoping their inheritance doesn't include any of those friggin' creepy-ass dolls. That wraps up this week's episode. Take some bail money with you when you go out partying this weekend, and I hope to see you out there. Love you. Bye! You like this outfit? It's nice, right? I got it. I was in the Olympics. You see that? See that right there? Yeah, we can, we can do all the drums. We got room, right? We could build a new prison. You ever seen anybody hit it like I do? Shoo, shoo, shoo. We could call it Trump prison. Trump could have, okay, get this. Trump's presidential library is a prison library. Huh? How, how good is that? That works perfectly, right? We just stick him in there. We stick him in his library. It's his own personal hell. Books with his name on it that he didn't write. I mean, it was Winter Olympics, but you know, that's why it's a, it's a coat. And I'm burning up out here. It's so hot. It's so hot. Oh God, it's so hot. Did you guys notice all the weird purple flying elephants too? That's weird, right? <laughs>